I like Kickstarter. I do. Uh, because of Kickstarter, I actually got to work on the remake of a game I grew up playing, the Leisure Suit Larry series. I got to meet the creator, Al Lowe. Uh, not that I expect everybody has the same experience with Kickstarter. Uh, but I like the principle in general, taking aside my first personal experience. I, I like the idea, the crowdfunding, uh, basically people being able to vote with their dollars, because who wouldn't have? Uh, if we had the option of, hey, send a dollar or five dollars to this address and we'll keep Firefly on the air for another year. I think something like that would have been really great. It speaks much more than a petition, which is easy to sign, and I don't think people pay attention to petitions. Uh, but it also has the added benefit of the thing you send money to gets made. Uh, we've seen it be a great resurgence of like the old school adventure games, which I love. Uh, fun indie projects. Sometimes I just surf through there and see the weirdest stuff. And I'll give them five bucks because it's... Just... I gave... In fact, I wasn't planning on this demonstration, but I have it here in my wallet. Uh, a webcomic that I really like called Saturday Morning Breakfast Cereal had this idea for a Kickstarter. And it is a gentleman's single-use, unlubricated monocle for classy emergencies. See, it look, I know, it looks like a condom. Welcome to the joke. But uh, you tear it open, and you can put it in the monocle, and then, oh my gosh, and it can pop out, and you can be shocked, right? I keep it in my wallet, because one day, somebody will say something shocking to me, and I will say, hold on a second, and I'll actually do the joke. It cost me $3. And when I saw it on Kickstarter, I went, you know what? That joke is worth $3 to me. Congratulations, here's my money. I like being able to do that. I've backed several games. I've backed some Earthbound-related stuff. I've backed some Friends projects. Uh, there was a couple of failed things. I, I like Kickstarter. I like the idea of it. But <sighs> there are times I worry about the ethics of the people creating Kickstarter projects. Uh, and I want to talk about two in specific because I don't, I don't think they understand how Kickstarter is really supposed to work. And this first one, I'm, I, I turned out to be wrong. Uh, and it was the Bring Back Mystery Science Theater 3000 Kickstarter, which I'm all for, man. They got, they got a decent chunk of my money. Uh, a big supporter. I just... And it's, you know, the original creators. We want to make this again. Here's our plan. We'll make these episodes. Fantastic. The issue I have is when... Almost in the opening paragraph, they say, here's our goal. And that's the goal they set with Kickstarter. For those of you who don't know, the idea of Kickstarter is crowdfunding. Anybody can pledge money at various tiers. Various tiers come with rewards. So you get stuff. In addition to, in Mystery Science Theater's case, let's say, the, the goal was to raise enough money to do three episodes. Three new episodes of Mystery Science Theater. In addition to funding those three episodes at various levels, you got rewards, t-shirts, DVDs, whatever. Depending on how much you gave. And none of your money leaves your account until it meets the goal. That's the, huge, that's the cool thing about Kickstarter. You don't lose money unless the project succeeds, which is kind of perfect, right? And that really is voting with your dollars. If not enough people care, the project doesn't get made, but you didn't lose anything by trying. And in the opening paragraph of the Mystery Science Theater thing, here's our goal. The goal they set in the system, if it meets this, the project gets funded, was for three episodes. But our real goal is this much, much larger number for 12 episodes. And all the, announce all the updates that went out said, you know, if we reach this, then maybe it'll come back for good. Not just these 12 episodes, but if we get this, not this goal, but if we get this other goal, then TV executives will notice. If we don't hit this other one, we're probably not going to be able to bring the show back permanently, and you'll just get these three episodes, and that'll be it. Then why did you set your goal for the three episodes? If this is our goal, so that we're guaranteed to make it, but our real goal is this hard to reach one over here. Why not go for broke? Make that your real goal. Because my argument would be anybody who's kind of on the fence about whether or not to give money, they're going to see that you met your goal and go, oh, good, cool. I'll watch those episodes when they come out. Or I'll, you know, pirate them or whatever. 
and you lose out on potential money because they don't think, well, my $5 is going to help because you don't need the help. It bugs me when I see that on Kickstarter. We've set our goal at, but our real goal, if that's your real goal, then you should set it as that, not as something that's easier to make. Um, I am glad to be proven wrong when it comes to Mystery Science Theater in particular because they ended up surpassing that far distant goal by a significant amount. Uh, and they ended up getting funding not just for the 12 episodes that the far goal was, but 14 episodes and breaking world records for crowdfunding. So I'm, I'm glad I was wrong in that one. I'm looking forward to more Mystery Science Theater. They had my money. It just rubs me the wrong way whenever anybody says, our goal is, but our real goal is. If it's your real goal, go for broke. If the idea of Kickstarter is for people to vote with their money as to whether or not your project should exist, let them vote on the real thing. Not on your makeshift halfway goal. Which brings us to the Dragon Slayer Kickstarter that was canceled and moved over to Indiegogo. I backed it for a little bit of money. Uh, I did not back the Indiegogo one because it, it really rubbed me the wrong way. The Kickstarter campaign for Dragon Slayer, which was... Uh, I'm not going to go grab it. I, I have them. It was an old animated arcade uh, that you still might see sometimes around. You can now get the thing on Blu-ray and it'll autoplay or you can play it yourself. It's gorgeously animated. I mean, it's just... It's beautiful. Uh, it's kind of fun to just watch as a movie, even though it has almost no dialogue. It's just... It's beautiful. It's made by Don Bluth, uh, Land Before Time... Uh, five all so on and so on. Uh, it's gorgeous. And so, I was willing to back a movie, kind of. The problem I have with the Dragon's Lair movie, independent of what we're about to talk about, and I just, if those of you who know Dragon's Lair, I want you to picture this. If we make a Dragon's Lair movie, Dirk will have to talk. The main character will have dialogue. And I just have a very hard time, having sat through Dragon's Lair 1 and 2, where he never talks and it's all action. He'd have to talk. Somebody's voice would have to come out of his mouth. And it just... I can't quite get that to work for me. It's kind of like when the uh, Bill Waterston said that the reason they did not do a Calvin and Hobbes cartoon, because they came very close, is finally when it came down to it, he could, just, he could not picture the sound of Hobbes' voice. Couldn't do it. And I feel the same way about Dirk the Daring. Like, it's very difficult for me to picture a voice coming. That kind of turns me off. But what really upset me about the campaign, the campaign was, let's make a Dragon's Lair movie. People have wanted it for decades. Let's do it. Fantastic. That sounds like a great Kickstarter project. Until you learn that the 350, 500,000, whatever the goal was, that they're trying to raise, is not to make the movie. It is to make a demo reel to then sell to production studios to get backing to make the movie. Your campaign is called Dragon's Lair Movie. But that's not what people are paying for. They're paying for a demo reel that you will then take to studio heads and say, Hey, we want to make something like this. Can you give us millions of dollars to do it? That seems dishonest to me. Uh, and I'm sure people who donated knew what they were in for. I mean, they, they didn't hide that fact. But it's not... Kickstarter shouldn't be to fund a dream. Kickstarter should be to make a dream come true. If I donate my money to the Dragon Slayer movie-making Kickstarter, then... When you have gathered enough money from all the people who, like me, would like to see a Dragon's Lair movie, although I'm kind of on the fence, really, the end result should be a Dragon's Lair movie. In addition to whatever rewards I get for whatever tier I, I donated at, the, the tier rewards are nice, but you really sign up to make the project happen. There is zero guarantee no matter how successful the Indiegogo is, and it did reach its funding, no matter how successful the Indiegogo campaign for the Dragon Slayer movie is, there is zero 
guarantee that there will be a feature-length Dragon's Lair movie as a result. There's none. There will be a demo reel. And then they're going to try and get millions from studios who probably won't say yes. You're talking about a 30-year-old franchise? I, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I'd be surprised. I'd, I'd be fine with being wrong. Again, we'd have to listen to Dirk talk, which would just be weird. And they said that the Daphne design would be different because she was very sexualized in the games. And they would change it to make her less sexualized. <sighs> okay, I get your argument. I do. And I'm not for the needless objectification of women. I'm really not. But when you're announcing I'm going to make a movie adaptation of an intellectual property... Here's the things I'm going to change from that intellectual property. I, I get nervous uh, when the first thing you announce is changes. I mean, it makes sense. And who knows if it gets made, which it could be. I'm not, a, I'm not an expert. I'm not a prophet. It could get made. It could be great. I mean, Don Bluth's last several movies haven't been. Not since, uh, I think, Rockadoodles, where things really took a turn. But just this idea of... Let's get a community of people together to donate their time and money. Mostly money. But, you know, we also you're also supposed to share it with your friends and get your friends to donate. There, there is a time element in there as well, and some will probably spend more than others. Get a community of people together who want to see this movie made. And what they get out of it is a demo reel. And after that, potentially nothing. It doesn't seem right to me. That that it feels like an abuse of the crowdfunding system to me. I don't know. I I don't know enough about animated films. Maybe it's just simply impossible to make a feature length animated film on a budget that Kickstarter could support. There's gotta be a way to make it for less than millions. I don't know. But uh, I just... I very much... It very much rubbed me the wrong way. Um, I, again, all, all the luck in the world to them. Uh, I, I would see it if a Dragon's Lair movie got made. I would at least see it and give it a shot. Uh, and I'm thrilled beyond belief uh, that Mystery Science Theater broke records. I was worried that it wouldn't. And that was really my main fear with Mystery Science Theater. That's why it rubbed me the wrong way is I really thought they were shooting themselves in the foot with, here's our goal, but here's our real goal. I'm glad it worked out for them. I hope it works out for Don Bluth. Uh, I just... I don't know. It just bothered me. So I thought I'd share, apparently. So uh, go on Kickstarter. Find some fun projects. There's some fun stuff on there. See you guys later. Hi, I'm Luke Bryan, two-time CMA Entertainer of the Year. If I ever learn how to read, I'm going to read The Great Platypus Caper by Jeff Hillary because I believe in supporting fine literature. I'm Luke Bryan. Hi.